Okay, Gramagat, Kahir Dakhtan, good morning, Eddie and, and Matt and Thomas, and thank you for coming in here and speaking to us. And as I said, you've made it very clear what the issues are and indeed offered solutions here. But I suppose just maybe to talk a little bit more about um, your experiences, um, Eddie, you frequently make the point that there are supports there for employers to employ disabled people, but the same supports don't exist to employ yourself such as the wage subsidy scheme and other reasonable accommodations. So maybe to expand on that. And you know, what supports did you receive? Um, and then, you know, Eddie, obviously you might where, the, where the lacking was, you know? Yeah, just let Pauline finish the questions and then we'll come yeah. back to you, OK? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, and I suppose, Matt, the same thing as well. I suppose, like, you know, the supports that existed, but where, you know, where the real support, where the supports let you down, where they weren't there, um, and even, Barriers you um, come up against, and even attitudinal barriers as well. You know that uh, people around uh, disability. Um, so just just to come back, come back to, to Thomas after that, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so the the supports are there for people to employ disabled people, yes. but they're not. The same supports don't seem to exist to employ yourself as such. Yes, so they, yes. Yeah. The, that's, like, the, such as the wage yes, subsidy yes, scheme yes. or reasonable yeah, accommodations. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's clear we um, disabled uh, entrepreneurs are forgot about in making policies for um, um, the, the supports and the supports I received first I didn't get any support because they took 25% off me most people get a extra bonus from going for looking for work but the state took money off me. And the partial capacity benefit is it's brilliant for um, um, a disabled employee, but it's not designed for disabled entrepreneurs. And the workplace adaption grant was my main one. And, uh, and that about uh, five grand, and I used this to get a specialized uh, quick mints and cameras, but with, with the cost of disability, you, you can add it up, yeah. and. Uh, 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 yeah, that is. Yeah, so basically, you really would need to be able to maintain your full payment it, until you're that's, really that's, established, that's isn't it? Like, to leave. Yeah. But to develop a business, there's grants for everything. I don't need a grant to build a website. I don't need a grant to. Um, get a mentorship, I have the practice, I have no shortage of work, I want the state to help me to provide in that work to people and contribute to society. Yeah, so there's lack of flexibility yeah. about the, yeah. the grants, yeah. Yeah, I think it, 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 it's a similar... Um, situation with Eddie. I know that I, when, I, when I speak to disabled entrepreneurs, the same situation with myself, we're in this weird scenario where we're almost scared to start that business because we know the disability allowance in my case would just be taken away mm -hmm. and there's no sort of, you know, step down situation or safety net in that sense. So it leads to this extra level of stress as you're trying to set up a business that, you know, that there's really before the business is able to support you, your own supports will be taken away. Yeah. And a, a, a bit like 
with, with the situation with Eddie was with all the different grants that were available, a lot of them just didn't really apply to me. And I couldn't really identify or find, find ways to identify those, 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 those supports. Um, you know, I, I think that's, yeah, I echo pretty much the exact same challenges. As, you know, there is that, that lack of flexibility and understanding in that everyone's sort of situation is kind of different. And the point has been made here by disabled people that self-employment will suit many of them because it allows you the flexibility to work around, you know, your capability. You don't have to work to what an employer wants, but then you're coming up against different barriers. So, and I mean, Thomas, you say that it's over, I'm at over 50,000 disabled um, self-employed people. Yeah, that's, that's correct, but just for the record, uh, according to the OECD report from 2023, we've got the lowest rate of self-employed people within the OECD. So while we do have that number, right, our, our, our proportional rate of self-employment is really poor. So similar in, to our employment rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and and, and in, in proportion to the number of people with disability, yeah. um, we're way behind every other country. Okay. Um, if I may, Deputy, just come back on one or two things regarding yeah, um, comments that you raised. Um, if you take Eddie's situation, Eddie and I don't know each other quite well, so um, the, like, Eddie has a disability and if he cannot get a grant to employ somebody without a disability, whereas if he was somebody without a disability, employing somebody with a disability, he could get a grant. So he needs support regarding driving, regarding carrying equipment, and he cannot get any support to hire that person. But if it was the other way around, he'd have no problem getting support. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of one of the anomalies that, that exists. The other one is that um, people who, you're quite right, the environment is probably best now, because COVID has taught us that remote working um, is possible. Assistive technologies have never been better, mm -hmm. so people can work from home. And the notion of being, of, of being, of having a disability, which some people might discriminate against in terms of doing business with you, mm -hmm. right? If you're now in the background, that's invisible. Okay, so working from home, it's also you don't have issues like access to work. Um, you also have flexibility in terms of hospital appointments or, or other medical issues. And so it's, all of that's now possible. Um, but where the difficulty lies is that some people start up a business, but then due to health reasons need to step off for a while. And now they've got no income, okay? And they cannot get back into the welfare benefit system, right? And that's coming back to the point I was making earlier about the binary system of you can work or you can't work. Mm. People move along a line that sometimes they can and sometimes they can't. But if you step off, you're lost. And the welfare benefit trap is without doubt the single biggest barrier to self-employment for people with disability and, and arguably for employment as well. Yeah. And like we, that's one, it's the big one we need to address. There are other issues as well, um, like relevant enterprise supports, but that's the biggie. Yeah and maybe a, a better understanding among people within the Department of Social Protection who are dealing with these and, and, and within you know, other enterprise and so forth. Yeah, it's definitely needed. Um, thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you.